It's summertime, baby. That means we got new boards. So let's take a look at what uh everybody's been everybody's been cooking up. All right, we got Comet. We got Comet with the Ethos. Ethos, probably like one of the most loved boards from uh, Comet's OG lineup. Looks like they uh, pretty much have the same shape with it, uh, except they kind of, you know, they, they narrowed it down just a tiny bit to nine and a half inches. And I know some people are like, that's not even, that's not even that narrow these days. Have you seen people making, yes, we know, yes. I feel like little board people, people that skate little boards are like, they have to be small. Everything's small, guys. I don't, did you guys know I can skate at 8.2? It's like, chill, dude. Like, just, yes, we know people are skating tiny boards. It's like, calm down, okay? Yeah, the good old ethos. I mean, it's a pretty uh, straightforward board. Like they say, the classic speed board with a kicktail. I do want to highlight, these are some good grab rails, right? They're they're dense, you know, they're, you, they're pretty beefy. You can get up in there. I think this is the way to do it. The shape, uh, extremely inoffensive. But you know what? I, this is absurd. I can't believe they're selling this for 225. This seems like kind of ridiculous, honestly. Is there like a weird... Nope, this is literally just nine ply maple. Come on, that's a crime. That's a crime. You can't sell that for 225. Is that a complete? That's deck only. That's crazy. You can't be selling that for 225. I mean, yeah, it's a good board, but like, no, you can't be doing that. Madrid up next, Madrid. Uh, before we even get started on these two that are actually new, I can't even understand why they still have this board and it's like in the performance downhill section this uh dark horse 31 this is from the old lineup so i'm like we're not gonna get there okay this is bizarre why is this here but yeah we got the new harry clark pro model the ghost and then the cam brick pro model just brick is that what they're calling it? just the cam brick series doesn't get a doesn't get a fancy name like harry's ghost over here let's start with uh we'll start with harry's board so we got the harry clark pro model ghost it was probably due for an update uh from harry clark's old pro model it was kind of weird when harry clark's old board came out because it was what is it nine and a half it's a big wide board for for a race board okay uh and it was kind of weird to me that it was that wide because he was racing with like slalom rogues and i feel like he was i don't know slalom rogues with mags even i feel like is not nine and a half it seemed very wide so we've got a more appropriate width at 8.88 in this case uh, which seems to make more sense to me why do they have like this reflective thing here what makes it look like it's got a drop this is not got a drop no drop yeah there's no drop in this so weird but yeah i mean this is a pretty like straightforward board uh it seems like all of these race boards are like almost exactly the same thing i feel like with race boards they're almost in the same category as uh like street decks not category is probably not the right word but they're all becoming like the same thing when you look at a street deck they're all yes they're all very slightly different from one another the nose shape might be slightly more round or more pointed but Pretty much all these race boards are like, you know, 8.8 .8 to 9 inches wide. They're like 32 long. They have like a 20 or to 20 to 22 inch wheelbase. They have minimal concave so that you can do whatever you want with it. I mean, they're like pretty much all the same thing to me. Uh, construction, they're all just, you know, they're stiff boards. So, I don't know. Feels weird to me because I remember when I first got into line boarding and something I still like about downhill is the diversity of boards and how everybody kind of has their own thing and just feels like all these boards it's like they kind of found that this is pointed nose this is you know they get a little creative with the tail here uh, but they're all like pretty much the same I feel like and then we have cam bricks board cam bricks board one thing I really like about this board is there's just one wheelbase setting I kind of don't like the look of it when there's like 55 different wheelbase settings. It's like, it seems so obnoxious. I think it looks a lot better with just one wheelbase. One thing that's interesting about this board is it's based off of the Nessie mold, which is not a very well liked mold. If you guys ever stood on the Madrid Nessie, the flares are a bit intense. They're not like the most comfortable concave. And I feel like for a board like this, you probably want it to be a little more comfy right a little bit more minimal what i just complained about right 
So they're definitely doing something interesting. I'd be uh, curious to see what this actually feels like underneath uh, your feet. Another thing about Madrid boards that I think is interesting is their use of Formica. Almost nobody else uses Formica in boards, and Formica is pretty much just like a, a sheet of plastic, more or less. Uh, and what I've heard about Formica, that it doesn't have any flex dampening characteristics. It doesn't really stiffen the board up much here. Uh, I mean, it must do something though, right? I mean, they have literally four layers of Formica in this. I don't know, it might just make it heavy. I feel like you'd be better off just adding maple to it. But uh, what are you gonna do? Good for Cambrick getting his own pro model. All right, Zine, it's probably one of the older boards, this uh, bullet here, it's probably one of the older boards few months old or so that I'm uh, going over here but uh, you know we got your good old narrow race setup we got a pointed nose maybe a little more rounded than the other one uh, pretty much no taper here nine inches like I said 20.25 to 22.5 so this is fitting the mold of a race board kind of expensive looks like it's got carbon in it you know I will say Zenit and and Rocket they, they need to do a little uh, little rock paper scissors on the design language here because this looks exactly like a rocket board this black with white small minimal graphic here they're gonna have to figure this out because I, I I can't even figure out who's if they didn't have Zenit written on this I think this is a rocket board and there's probably some rocket boards that I think are Zenit boards so rock paper scissors you guys gotta make it happen I feel like I don't know much to say about these boards they're just so minimal there's there's not much going on here you know all right, Pantheon up next. They are, uh, you know, they just dropped two new race boards. Luckily, there's a little, little bit more going on here. Okay, we got the Andy Atch, Atchison Pro model here. Pretty cool to see Pantheon dipping into the lower cost brackets of boards here. 180, which is surprisingly low. Not quite Madrid low, but um, quite a bit lower. One thing I, uh, you gotta love here is uh, Pantheon goes real hard in uh, writing their essay about uh, the design concepts of their boards here. A couple other companies do this. Madrid, you guys gotta, you guys gotta do better here. You can, Madrid could probably learn a thing or two from Pantheon and some of the other companies. They need to put a little more description in their boards, okay? Sell those things, come on now. So, I mean, the big unique thing about the uh, Andy board, you got the tail wedge, you know, creating their own torque block here. And I always felt like the seed was a bit wide uh, for what it was trying to be. So uh, Tortuga is definitely more compact, more ergonomic feeling. These Pantheon graphics, they're, uh, I mean, this this is very fitting with Andy. I feel like uh, Andy is like the perfect fit for Pantheon with their, you know, third eye. I've talked about this before with their graphics. Uh, Andy seems like he's been spending a lot of time in Boulder or something in the crystal shops seems like Pantheon is too, so they are a match made in heaven. Overall, you know, with the little wedge tail as well as a little W bump in the back, uh, just a little bit more unique compared to some of the other race shapes out there. Mitch Thompson, pro model. Kind of similar racy shape. Uh, one thing I will say I do always like about it is that the front is actually thinner than the back. We got the reverse taper. I'm a big fan of it and some people think it's a sin, but I like it. Uh, I mean, it makes sense, right? Keep your front foot at an angle. Your back foot is, you know, maybe perpendicular. So, you know, your back foot is going to naturally take up more space than the, the front foot if you're keeping it at an angle, which probably should be. Uh, so, you know, the reverse taper actually makes some sense to me. Got a little bit of W, you know, all that good stuff. I, I feel like they're, they're kind of missing out here with the, with the graphic here. I mean, it's very Pantheon. But is it very Mitch Thompson? I don't know. It doesn't really scream Mitch Thompson to me. An easy win would be to, you know, go with a, a weightlifting theme, you know. Mitch Thompson, our resident downhill skater, big lad. He's he's a big dog. And I feel like everybody knows that. You know, I feel like they could just do like a you know a stack of 45s and maybe some steak and eggs. I feel like that would be it. But you know, yeah. got another race shape for you. All right, moving on to Rocket. Rocket. Okay, so Rocket has uh, a couple new boards coming out. I know they've got uh, Benson's board, it looked like, was coming out. And then I think they have a few other pros being added to their team with their own pro models, which is very cool. Uh, it's very cool on their part. Uh, they have the uh, gravity plate. 
cool. But the big thing is the Leon, and uh, there's been a fair amount of content about the Leon out there to be watched by yeah, Anton Carlotti's, Carlotti's, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> is uh, his new pro model. And we got aboard with the kicktail here, right? And uh, unlike the ethos, which is kind of like the minimal kicktail, there's a lot more going on here. Not to say you can feel like there's a lot going on here, but you know, you look at a rocket description and it's like feature, feature, feature. It's a top mount, that's a feature. So we got elliptical concave. They explain what's the purpose for that. Uh, they have extra layers of fiberglass in the tail. It's kind of a nice touch. That's cool. It's cool. We got some drops. We got some rocker. We got some wheel flares, right? They still uh, make it all work, make it inoffensive. Seems like a decent board. I will say uh, nose, I feel like could be a little bit more gradual here, uh, but overall, you know, it's a pretty decent little shape we got going on. Up next is Arbor. Welcome back, Arbor. Okay, so you uh, you guys you guys left us for a little while, and you want to come back, make a little bit of that longbow money. Okay, I see, I see. So we got the uh, Tyler Pro model, Tyler Howell Pro model, and the Daniel McDonald Pro model here. We'll start with the Daniel Pro model. Shape overall, uh, pretty normal looking shape. We got the pinned out tail here. We got a you know, rounded front nose. Uh, reminds me a lot of the Liam Morgan Pro Model shape from back in the day, especially the nose here. Looks like the board itself is, uh, whoa, got a lot going on here. Rocker and microdrop, kicktail, flush mounts, wheel wells. What are they trying to be, rocket over here? Uh, features on features. This graphic is interesting, it's kind of cool. Looks like they've got like this drawing of the rails uh, just you know, slimmed down, which I think makes the shape a little bit more accentuated. Kind of cool, kind of cool. And uh, we got this fish tuna graphic. I think it's supposed to be to celebrate the favorite roads of uh, these guys, Dan McDonald. I mean, he must like the fish, I assume. I assume that's what this is a reference to. Um, so yeah, uh, looks like they've got a lot going on here. Now the one thing I will say, I'm pretty sure the Tyler Howell and Daniel McDonald board, what I've heard, what I've heard here is they're actually from the same mold, but they are reversed. So like where the drop is at in one of the boards is on the opposite end for the others. Uh, which is kind of a fun little thing and something that actually a lot of companies do, but we just don't really hear very much about it. I have no idea what this graphic is a reference to. It's not, no, it's not like Gibraltar or anything. Hey, brother, not out. today. But yeah, we got a little bit more creativity in the shapes, I would say, for this one. We have a more geometric pointed nose. A big fan of this nose. Pretty sick like it a lot. And then the tail, we got the swallow tail kick tail, which I'm not as big of a fan of. I hate the feeling of feeling like the two points hitting the ground when I'm doing, you know, an ollie or something like that. Just, I do not like that feeling, but what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Uh, boards are pretty well priced. 150, which I guess kind of points to the size of Arbor being a bigger company. They could probably take these costs, but uh, yeah, fiberglass and uh, wood, which is like the same makeup as like a Pantheon board, but the Pantheon's 30 bucks more, so. All right, last up, we got Rain. Rain, Rain, Rain. Rain has got the Heritage Libido 32. So they have this older Libido, the Libido 31, and uh, the concave on this thing is so much. It is like crazy. They don't have any photos, surprisingly, of it from like a side profile. But yeah, it is like a crazy amount of concave. So let's take a look. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, they still have the wild concave. The shape is pretty cool, but let's talk about the concave. This, look at this thing, dude. This is insane. I know they have their, their triple rocker profile, whatever it is. You know, basically they have like flat middle and then it angles up at the edges. But this looks not good. I, I mean, the pockets that it creates might be, you know, attractive to some people, but this is like an extremely unattractive side profile, rail profile. It is like nasty looking. This is like OG bacon concave that we're seeing here. The shape is nicer. I like that it is, I like how big the nose is on it, which is cool. But uh, yeah, I, I can't stand that concave. It looks insane also i mean yeah it's like a cool old graphic but like you could you know 
Don't be lazy, Rain. Just make a new graphic. I know it's like a, you know, it's a crowd pleaser doing an old Vandal graphic, but come on, guys. You can do better than that. It's all the boards that are coming out recently. I know Rocket's got some more coming out in the future, but uh, yeah, no, we'll see.